Hello everybody, and this is Biohazardia with the How to Draw Nightwings tutorial. Nightwings are probably one of the easiest Wings of Fire tribes to draw, given that they don't have any particularly special features like frills or shiny scales or color changing scales or glowing scales or anything fancy like that. I just want to take the time before I start the main bulk of the tutorial to give a shout out to my friend Snivy Mice, who loves Nightwings, her favorite tribe. But either way, let's get started on how to draw Nightwings, this time featuring Clear Sight. Yes, I picked Clear Sight instead of Moonwatcher or Starflight, just because since there's no canon design of her, I wanted to give her a little bit of love. So far, I've just drawn the generic S shape and the head of the Wings of Fire Dragon which you can apply to pretty much any Wings of Fire dragon aside from Mud Wings, or probably Hive Wings and Silk Wings since they tend to be very, very slender. But aside from that, I've used sort of diamond shape for her eyes since I want to give clear sight kind of feminine looking eyes. And I'm drawing in the beak at the end of the snout. So Night Wings are among the Wings of Fire dragons along with I think Sand Wings and Rain Wings and Sky Wings and a couple others that have a beak. They also have eye ridges that kind of hang over their eyes and a lip of scales over their eyes. So I'm detailing that in as well. So I know what to do when I do the line art. Next, Nightwings have a bunch of scales that kind of go across their snout. I, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it's the scales that are along the sides of their snout. And I'm just then filling in the rest of the scales along the face to give myself a clear indication of how I'm going to do my line art when I get to that step. Just make sure that when you're doing the scales across the Nightwing snout that they curve towards the eye as opposed to curving towards the snout. Um, they do curve in one particular way, so it's good to keep watch for that. If you want to draw your dragon smiling, as I've done here with Clear Sight, I've been trying to give her sort of a serene look. You can kind of draw the mouth of your dragon and then add a small line at the end that's about horizontal, and that will kind of give the impression of cheeks that have been rolled up a little bit to show a smile. So it's, it's a good way to make a quick and easy smile on characters. Next, Nightwings have sort of a textured underbelly. So I'm adding a few lines to the underbelly and then I'm getting started with the scales. Nightwings have two rows of scales, one large set of overlapping scales that are right next to the belly. And these have the little teardrop marks on them. They also are slightly curved next to the belly. So instead of just allowing the scales to be along the straight belly line, I added in that little bit of curve so that you can see that the scales are in fact overlapping with the belly. Next I added the ear, which is just again another almond shape, similar to uh, what I've done in past tutorials. And I determined the scale shape on the face a little bit better, sort of sketching in the scales next to the horns and the scales above the head. If you look at Nightwing scales, they have three layers of scales, but you actually have to do two layers. And then the third layer can be drawn with an easy trick. So as you can see, I've drawn that first layer of scales with the little teardrop markings on them. And all I have to do is I just have to draw curved lines that connect those scales to the back scales. And then to draw the third layer, it's very simple. All you have to do is just draw a thin line down the back of the Nightwing just like in the reference art, just draw a thin line that's pretty much parallel to the line of the back of the neck. And then all you have to do is just draw little lines, probably about two to each of the middle scales, if that makes any sense. About two separations for each middle scale to draw the thinly lined back scales. And then after that, all you have to do is just put in the spikes and you are pretty much finished with the sketch at this point. So now I'm going to flip my canvas after cropping it and flipping it horizontally, as I talked about in a previous tutorial, really helps me see the problems. So I noticed here that Clear Sight's neck is a little bit too stiff. So I adjusted my lines a bit so that I know when I do my line art to make her chest puff out a little bit. And I also adjusted a problem that I saw with the forehead. It was just a little bit set too far back. And now I'm going to go ahead, lower the opacity and get to the line art step. Per usual, I'm going to speed up the line art since I'm just following my sketch, essentially.
cool. Now I'm gonna put my signature on, which I usually do when I'm finished with my line art. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of detail in the scales above the eyes, since Nightwings have a layer of scales that eventually becomes the scales on their spine. And now that I've done the line art, I noticed that the horns on clear sight are a little bit too long, so I'm just shaving them down a little bit. Because the sketch process tends to be kind of messy and freewheeling, sometimes when you do your line art, or even when you block in your colors if you're doing lineless, then you can tell if something kind of looks wrong, even though it looked okay in the sketch because it was so sketchy. In the line art, once everything is cleaned up, you might realize, whoops, this is messed up. So I'm gonna color in the Nightwing now, and I'm using the same tricks that I used in previous tutorials, where I select the outside of the line art, and then I invert my selection, and I can just immediately color in the inside of the line art. But remember that this leaves little blotches of color, uh, around the spikes and in any areas where you didn't fully fill out your line art. So it's you have to go along around your line art and make sure that you clean up everything so you don't have a messy picture. Something else of note when you're coloring in Nightwings, you should never make your background color or you should never make your base color for your Nightwing all black. Like you shouldn't make it pure jet black because if you do that, then nobody is going to be able to see the features on your Nightwing. Now, usually using a dark gray, if you want your character to be black or your Nightwing to be black, then it's best to actually make them dark gray so that people can see the f different features and the different scales that you've done. You can also give the uh, gray a slight tint, and this is really helpful if you're drawing something with a background. So like if you have a green background, then the scales are going to reflect the green of the trees or the forest or whatever you have in the background. So you might want to give your Nightwing a slightly green tint. And then of course some Nightwings actually already have a tint in their scales, like Faux Slayer has a green tint to her scales. Now with Clear Sight, I always had canned her with a slightly purple tint to her scales. Uh, so I've given her a slightly purplish tint in this picture. Going slightly off the subject of drawing for a little bit, I always wondered whether Clear Sight had a like teal tint to her scales and like her color scheme is based on teal, like Moon Watchers, or if it was based on purple. So for to me, like purple always just really fit with Clear Sight and her serenity and her knowledge um, and her wisdom. But a lot of people, including myself, uh, had canon for a while that Moonwatcher was some sort of reincarnation of Clear Sight. And so in that sense, a lot of people thought that she had a teal tint to her scales, teal eyes, etc. Because, um, yeah, because people thought that Clear Sight and Moonwatcher were like related in the soul somehow. And honestly, while I really enjoy that headcanon, I still kind of have that headcanon personally, especially because, uh, Slight spoilers for book 12, but in the prologue, um, Luna talks like Moonwatcher is Clear Sight's second coming. So the fact that Tui even wrote that in, I'm pretty happy that she acknowledged that headcanon. But when I met her for the Lost Continent release party, she actually mentioned that Moonwatcher and Clear Sight aren't necessarily reincarnations. They just react similarly and think similarly with respects to Darkstalker. So they're both like worried about Darkstalker and want the best for him, but they're also kind of worried about his effect on other dragons. I remember also at that interview, probably the biggest question that I wanted to ask Tui at that point was what color Clear Sight's eyes were. Since Clear Sight is probably my number one favorite character in Wings of Fire, it was kind of driving me crazy and drawing her all the time, but not knowing what her canon eye color was. So I was pretty overjoyed when uh, Tui said that they were purple, which I guess kind of makes sense because the only hint in the books that you have on Clear Sight's eye color are that she has dark eyes. So. Yeah, I was pretty happy about that. So just to talk about something in designing dragons in general, of course you don't always need to follow this uh, rule and quite a lot of beautiful designs can come out of not following this rule. But as you can see, I made Clear Sight's belly a lighter shade of gray. And then I made her back scales a darker shade of purplish gray. And the reason why that I tend to color like that, and I tend to generally color dragons uh, with darker spine and a lighter underbelly, um, is that if the dragon is going to camouflage into the air or into the sky, 
then usually um, they're going to have a lighter underbelly because when you look up at the sky, the sun is usually in the sky or the moon is usually in the sky in, for the case of the night wings. And it's really bright. So the brighter underbelly will blend into the brighter sky. Whereas if you're looking down at a dragon from higher in the sky, then you're going to be looking down at the ground. And so the ground is dark and therefore you want to have a darker spine. And this is actually why fish tend to have lighter underbellies and darker backs um, to camouflage in the water. So that's why I usually draw my dragons like that. But of course, um, you can do as you want. And then there are some dragons that have a lighter uh, spine coloring. So Moonwatcher, for example, has silvery, uh, darker gray, silver scales. Uh, on her spine. Getting back to talking about the actual drawing here, uh, drawing the eye, I'm using my normal method. So what I did was I started by just coloring the whole iris in purple. Then I draw kind of like a line of darker purple uh, at the top of the eye. And that's where the shadow of the bridge of the eye is. And then in the center, I draw a dark purple circle for the uh, pupil. And then I use light purple in kind of like a ring around the uh, the pupil for the iris. And that's like a really easy and simple way to draw kind of like a foolproof eye. Now Nightwings have these little kind of teardrop markings along their scales. And uh, that's why I'm just filling in here. Some people like to put that into the line art, but it honestly drives me crazy to color in tiny spaces in line art. I'm just really bad at coloring things in the lines, believe it or not. So I just prefer to do everything in uh, the coloring process if possible. One mistake that I made a lot, and you can actually see it if you look at some of my really early artwork for Wings of Fire, is that I thought that the teardrop scales on the, um, on the neck and on the body pointed downwards instead of upwards. So I thought the point of them was down instead of up. So a lot of my uh, night wings look a bit odd, but the proper way to draw them is how I've, how I've drawn it here. Now I finished with clear sight at this point, but one of my subscribers asked me to show how to draw Starflight's blindfold, since that's something that comes up in artwork a lot and it's helpful to know. So what I'm doing is I'm just, uh, making clear sight more transparent so that it's easy to see how I'm drawing the blindfold on top of it. And you can draw the blindfold into the original line art, but in this case, I'm just drawing the blindfold on top. So what I do is I make a small line uh, where the nose is, and you wanna make that line straight because the cloth won't necessarily cling to the nose. It's going to be lightly put on top of the face. It's not gonna be super tightly tied. And then, you just kind of make two slightly curved lines towards the back of the head uh, where the blindfold ends up being tied off like so. And while you do this, you wanna make sure that you add a couple of extra lines in the middle of the blindfold that's going in the same uh, direction as the rest of the cloth to show the, uh, the folds in the cloth essentially. So cloth folds are pretty difficult and especially if you're used to drawing dragons who normally don't wear clothes, they go around naked. Um, but you can look at pictures of actual people wearing clothes or pictures of blindfolds or pictures of like bandanas that are tied up. That gives you a good idea of where the bandana would fit on the face. So this is just kind of a rough, quick sketch that I did of the bandana to show how you would draw a bandana if you're drawing Starflight. Remember to add little highlights around the edges of the bandana where the cloth would naturally catch the uh, light in the environment and the light from above. And that helps make the cloth look a little bit more realistic, just like how I'm adding highlights around the edges right now. You can also add a little bit of shading uh, in the areas that there would be natural indents. So in the bridge of the nose, there would be an indent in the area where Starflight's eyes would be, then there also would be an indent, uh, but this is clear sight and she doesn't have a blindfold. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial of how to draw a Nightwing, how to draw clear sight and how to draw a blindfold on a dragon. Hope you enjoyed and see you in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.